So I put together a few uh, pictures and slides on some uh, other things related to the nervous system and also the senses. So what you're looking at here is a, a dissected nervous system. And we have this in the lab. It's under a glass case. Some of you may have seen it. Uh, but here's your spinal cord, if you just follow my mouse. Spinal cord and some of the things that you've learned about so far. We have the cervical plexus that you can see up here in the neck region. Coming out here to the side, we would have the brachial plexus, which has the nerves going out to the arms. Um, and here's a nerve that we talked about. Uh, this is the phrenic nerve, which goes to the diaphragm. So here's your diaphragm right here, all shriveled up. But this is the phrenic nerve going to the diaphragm. Then on each side of the spinal cord, you have the sympathetic chain ganglia, sometimes called sympathetic trunk ganglia. So that's what this is on each side of the spinal cord. And that has a, obviously a role with the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, other things up here, these all these nerves going out between your ribs would be the intercostal nerves. And then as we come down here, you can see we have the nerve split. Here's your sciatic nerve, which goes down the back of your leg. Same thing over here. And right around the back of the knee, the, remember the sciatic nerve splits into a tibial branch, which stays in the back, and a common fibular or common peroneal branch that kind of goes around the lateral side, and that's what that is. This is your femoral nerve, which goes down to your quadriceps right here. Those are the big things on this. Oh, one more, one more nerve that is that you can see. This little thing going out in your shoulder, this is the axillary nerve, and you can see it on this side too. So you're going to see a few more pictures like this, just zoomed in, but that's the overall view of this uh, dissected nervous system model. So kind of zooming in, now you can see clearly the brachial plexus, cervical plexus, sympathetic chain ganglia, get your phrenic nerve again, axillary nerve, intercostal nerves, focusing on the back of the leg, here's your sciatic, splitting into the uh, common peroneal and tibial. And so over here that you can actually see that they're labeled. So tibial stays is the long one that stays in the back of the leg. Common perineal wraps around the lateral side. And here's your femoral. All right, some other things related to the senses. Uh, you should remember what this is, Pacinian corpuscle. Over here we have the Meisner corpuscles that you can see within the uh, dermal papillae of the skin. This is a slide of the tongue. And so the what you're looking at is a circumvallate or vallate papillae of the tongue. And remember those have taste buds. So like the sides of these walls, you see these little oval structures here also, these are taste buds. And one of the sensory receptors we talked about in muscle was the muscle spindle. And that's what you're looking at right here. The muscle spindle, if you remember, in response to a rapid stretch, it causes a reflex contraction. So you're looking at skeletal muscle with uh, muscle spindle in it. Over here, this is just your olfactory epithelium. So you remember the olfactory epithelium in your nasal cavity, which has the olfactory uh, receptors that sense smell. So bipolar neurons, that's what this is. This is a layer of the olfactory epithelium. Uh, couple models here that are worthy of discussion. This is the auditory ossicles of the ear. So this is the malleus. This is the incus. This is the stapes. It looks like a stirrup. And here's the models of the eye that you can see. You can see a few things. So you got your sclera. The cornea is this outer clear layer. The colored part is the iris. The opening is the pupil. Uh, and that's pretty much, you can see the muscles that we've talked about before. But those are the big things that you can see in this, these models. Uh, this is actually pictures of a dissected eye. So it's a sheep's eye. So you can see this is what it would look like before it was dissected. When, it di when it's dissected, we do a coronal cut through it. So slice it into front versus the back. Uh, I'll just kind of jump around here. So this is the lens that actually popped out. So the lens is this nice little round thing. Uh, this, the clear thing in front is obviously the cornea, the white is the sclera. All this gooey stuff that you see here and here, that's the vitreous humor. 
that's in the vitreous cavity or posterior cavity. This picture right here is showing the optic nerve in the back of the eye. That's how the nerve, the neurons get to the brain from the eye. Coming back over here, when it's cut open, you see the vitreous humor again. Uh, this kind of grayish, whitish layer membrane, it looks like it's peeling back. That's actually the retina. When you cut open the eye, the retina actually detaches and it just kind of coils up. And so you see it here, you see it right here, they're pulling it out. So that's the retina. Uh, beneath it, you have the choroid. And a sheep's eye, it looks a little bit different than human. So this nice little iridescent, like bright color, that's the choroid in the uh, sheep's eye. So remember, that's where a lot of blood vessels are. Um, this picture, you can see the little pleated, and if you look hard, you see like a little pleated surface going around. That is the ciliary body. And you remember that has the ciliary muscles that kind of control the lens, its shape with the suspensory ligaments. And the other thing that uh, there's not really a great picture of right here, unless you were to pin the back of it, is the, the iris. So remember the iris, it's kind of hard to see with the lighting on this and how thick the cornea is, but the iris is just that disc behind the cornea and it's what opens to the pupil. So technically you can see the pupil right here in this picture, you see the opening. So the iris would be just around it. It's what surrounds the pupil. All right, this is a, some microscope slides of the retina. And so remember in this picture, I like this one because it's labeled, the light's gonna be coming in this way, hitting the back wall of the eye. So we're gonna assume this is the back wall of the eye. Here's your choroid sclera. Uh, so here's the rods and cones, the photoreceptors. Here's the nuclei of the rods and, rods and cones. So the light's gonna come here, hit the rods and cones. They're gonna generate action potentials which are gonna come out in this direction. So remember from the lecture, after the rods and cones are stimulated, they, they activate these bipolar neurons, which would be in this layer, which are gonna transmit the impulse to the ganglion cells, which are here, which are gonna go eventually form the optic nerve. So this is the best picture we have, but similar thing here, here's your rods and cones, their nuclei, bipolar neurons, ganglion cells. And in this picture, everything's kind of reversed, the light would be coming in this way. Boom, rods and cones, nuclei of rods and cones, bipolar neurons, ganglion cells. All right, here's a model of the ear. Um, so after you have listened to the hearing part of the lecture on the equilibrium, this will make sense to you. Um, but uh, oracle of the ear, the outside of it, here's your ear canal. This is the eustachian tube going to the pharynx. Uh, here's the eardrum or tympanic membrane. Here's your auditory ossicles, malleus, incus, stapes. Remember the stapes opens to the oval window, which goes and eventually it goes into the cochlea. This is the cochlea. Half of it's taken off so you can see the inside of it. Here's your semicircular canals involved in rotational equilibrium. And the vestibule would be in here and that's for the linear accelerations part of equilibrium. All right, another picture, here's the inner ear, uh, bony labyrinth. So you got the vestibule here, here's your cochlea used in hearing, here's your semicircular canals used in rotational equilibrium. And this is a good model we have of the cochlea, like a section of it. So if you remember from the lecture, we have the scala media, scala uh, tympani, scala vestibuli, the vestibular membrane, the basilar membrane, here's your organ of cordy with the hair cells, the tectorial membrane is here, and that whole process where this starts moving due to the, the pressure waves in here, and you can, you can see that these hair cells would generate action potentials that are gonna be transmitted back to the brain to let you know that you've heard something. Here's a microscope slide of, of the cochlea. This one is just a, kind of zoomed out a little bit, but if I pick one of these, you might be able to see the different parts. So if I pick this one, you can kind of see it. So scala media, scala vestibuli, scala tympani. Here's your vestibular membrane. Here's your basilar membrane with the organ of cordy. Same thing here, scala vestibuli, vestibular membrane, scala media, 
scala tympani. Here's your basal or membrane with the organ of cordy. And then last but not least, this one has everything labeled for you. So just like we talked about, organ of cordy would be right here on the basilar membrane. This is your vestibular membrane.